look how we do it on these seats. Well, we're doing pretty good. Just getting the drill guide in place so I can get my holes drilled here. Okay, and we got two of those drill guides, right? Yes, we do. Okay, and then once we're done drilling these holes, are we done with these? Uh, no, we still got to get the top caps made for these and glued in place. Oh, okay, yeah, we were going to do a cap on the top. Did we decide, did we want to do a flat top or did we want to do something round? Uh, go with more of a round dome looking piece. Okay, so a nice dome on top. Yeah, about a half inch did, high. Did you already make those? Or? I have not, no. Okay, yeah, why don't I go ahead and I'll knock those out real quick so you don't have to worry about it. Okay, sounds good. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so this is the perfect kind of project for a Fortis 450 3D printer. Uh, with this printer, we can print in a carbon fiber nylon 12 material and I think our plugs are gonna turn out just great with that. So let's get on SolidWorks and draw those parts up. We're going to use SolidWorks to design our seat cap part that I am then going to print out with our Fortis printer. So we're going to make a new part here and I will do that by starting a sketch uh, we'll use the right plane and our line tool. And so I'll start with uh, sketching out the profile of our cap. We're just going to make a nice dome part. So let's uh, make a little insertion point that's going to go into our tube. And then a little cutout for glue. And then I'll come up here, close our profile. So now I normally work in millimeters, but we're dealing with a one inch tube with an eighth inch wall. So I will start by setting the radius and that's gonna be a half an inch. So we'll do a 0.5 inches here and SolidWorks will convert that and the same thing up here we'll make that uh, 0.5 inches that way we'll have a nice perfect dome and then this part here will be for our wall thickness and we know that that is an eighth of an inch so we'll set that in inches and then this little cutout right here is for our glue, um, I think an eighth of an inch will work fine on that. And maybe just a two millimeter depth. And now what I'll do is make these parts here uh, collinear and equal. So what that will do is as I stretch my part, it'll keep my little glue reservoir there centered on my part and then I'll add a final dimension between the bottom of the cap and the, the lower plug and I think eight millimeters total depth is going to be fine there. So now that I've made that profile I'm going to revolve it around this axis and uh, boom we now have a 3D cap and what I'll do just to finish this off is add a, a about a half, I think a half millimeter bevel or chamfer there to the bottom. So there we go. That's my plug and that's going to plug right in the top and give me a nice circular finish. So what I'll do, I'll go ahead and I'll save this part. We'll just call it uh, seat top cap. Okay, uh, my 3D software program for the printer uh, only recognizes STL files. So we need to save that as an STL file, which is industry standard 3D printing file format. 
So now that I've done that, I will open up Insight, which is Stratasys' slicing program. We'll find our file. It's right up here at the top. Seat top cap, hit open. And this file is going to show up as being way too big because it's thinking it's in inches even though it's in millimeters. So we'll change that real quick by changing our unit here over to millimeters and now our part is sized correctly. I'll tell it where the bottom is and before I slice it I'm going to make sure that it knows what material I want to make this in so my model material is going to be our nylon 12 carbon fiber material and now we're going to set up our tool paths on a domed part like this what it what it's going to do when it makes this part is it's going to start at the bottom and slice it and print it out layer by layer so i know that from experience to get the best finish what we're going to want to do is make sure that all of our layers here that build up the dome um, overlap uh, nicely with a concentric circle so in order to do that I'm going to make sure that we're using multiple uh, concentric circles so I'm going to start out with three contours so it'll make three concentric circles and uh, we'll make the center of this with a nearly hollow fill and once we're done with that I will hit my green flag which will now slice this part and decide the best way to do that but we're going to evaluate that so this is a top-down look from the bottom layer up and you can see that these lines here basically trace the 3D printer's path as it lays down material. And I can go in here and hit Shade Tool Paths. And now I can see, you know, what my coverage is. And these little gaps that are around the perimeter here, for the most part, will be filled in as the next layer on top presses it down so what we'll do now is just step up layer by layer and so you can see how that jumped in that's our little glue cut out and then it will uh, jump back out here to the top of that and then it will jump out again for now this is the bottom of our dome that's going to sit on top of the tube and now what I want to do is as this circle gets smaller, I just want to make sure that I've always got concentric circles overlapping and then I never get a big jump. So if I take my cursor and just kind of trace inside of here as I step up and make sure that I'm constantly having overlapping layers, I, I know it's going to end up looking good. And then when I get to the top here, so I know I can do better than this. I'd rather have uh, more concentric circles than have it fill in the middle circle like this. So what I'll do is I'll make a custom group just for this layer and I will add more contours in there and we'll start off with maybe a, a thinner contour. So I'll add that to this group and we'll see what that looks like. So I like that a little better. I can probably close that hole up um, by maybe increasing that contour width a little more. And there we go. I, I think that's gonna turn out really good. So now I'll hit that green flag one more time and that will link that custom group up to the main slice. So once that's done, I can uh, now send this over to our control center, which is a virtual platform. So this is the 
platform of our printer so I can do 16 inch by 14 inch uh, parts and that's my part there and I actually need 10 of them so I'll copy that and I'll add nine more and then this square here that automatically gets placed that before each layer the printer will um, draw a little perimeter here to make sure that the material is coming out good and it wipes the tips out so that every layer of the parts is nice and clean so I'll just scoot that up there so I have a nice square group and then I can click estimate pack and this will now tell me how much model material it will use 2.9 cubic inches and 0.92 cubic inches of support material and it will take just over two and a half hours so I'm happy with this I'm going to go ahead and hit build job and what that will do is uh, send that over to my printer. Okay, so I've sent the part over here to our printer and now I'm just gonna make sure that it's set up. So I've got my green light, which means that I've got a sheet in here and it's ready to print. And I've got my pack seat top cap. My uh, project there is set to go. I'm just gonna hit play tell it where I want to print up in the corner here and we'll hit go and there you go it's going to heat the oven and tips and then it'll automatically start printing so we'll come back in uh, about two and a half hours and see how she did okay so it's been about two and a half hours it looks like our parts are done so uh, we'll go ahead and open up here and uh, yeah, there they are. Uh, looks just like our drawing. So let me go ahead and pull those out. Now this printer does use an oven, so the parts are going to be hot. So what I'm gonna do is put on my welding gloves to pull those out. So now when I pull those out on my sheet, I can see my parts here and they look really nice. You can see that support material. So what we're gonna do is go over to the dunk tank and we're gonna throw those in the dunk tank for a bit and it will dissolve that support material. So let's go over there now. Okay, so here we are at our dunk tank. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull off my gloves. What I've got here, this is an ultrasonic dunk tank. It uses uh, ultrasonic frequency to vibrate the water inside and a lye mixture which dissolves our support material. So what I'm gonna do is peel each of these little plugs right off. And uh, I don't need to do that, but it, it does make it work a little bit faster. So I'm just gonna peel these off here and throw the parts in my tank. So with hollow parts like that, if you look in the tank here, you can see they kind of float to the top. So as long as I make sure that the support material, the part that I need to actually dissolve is at the bottom, I'm okay. So then what I'll do, I'll close the tank, turn on my switch and kick on my ultrasonic annoying screech. And uh, we'll just let that sit there for a while and then we'll come back later for the next step. Parts have been in our tank for a couple hours now. I think they're ready to go. Uh, this water is really hot in here, so we've made this little scoop and uh, we'll, we'll just scoop the parts out. Just wanna make sure all my residue is gone. These look pretty good. They, they're still a little soapy, but uh, we'll throw them in our tumbler tank here next. Um, So 
now I'm gonna take our parts and put them in our tumbler tank, which is just gonna get rid of the little ridges on the dome and uh, make these look smooth. So we'll just toss these in here and then I'll just, just plug this in. Yes, it is. All right.